2022 has been a year of mixed fortunes. It's a, a year where we've paid a very high price as a country for events which are beyond our control, events which have come from um, elsewhere. Number one, the COVID-19 has continued to linger around and affected our performance. Then number two, we've had the Russia-Ukraine conflict also coming into the play. Then number three, we have had also the international levels of inflation, the global inflation levels rising and pass it through to affect us as in a form of imported inflation. We have also had the Ebola epidemic coming into uh, the play, not forgetting the drought and floods, a combination of both drought and floods affecting the country. We've also had lower global demand for our commodities, which affected the rate at which our exports would have grown. Also challenges we've had this year and which we are addressing. The first one and the major one has been the poor budget planning by different ministries, departments, agencies, and local governments. And these have, they have manifested in the form of, for example, delayed and sometimes outright uh, nanny payment of salaries, pension, and gratuity for some public servants. This is a matter of poor planning because as a ministry of finance planning and economic development, we work with our colleagues in the public service and we budget and release as a first call on the budget the wages, the pension, as well as gratuity of all public servants. So we don't expect anyone to fail to pay uh, these statutory obligations. They have a first call on the budget. So going forward, we are going first of all to carry out an audit on this payroll. Why are some public servants perennially not paid on time. This, we, we are going to address it uh, uh, for once and for all. The other issue we are addressing is the issue of the low tax effort. We want to mobilize more revenue to finance our budget. At the moment, our tax effort is low. Empiric evidence is showing us that we are having a tax effort index of 0 0.7, when our peers are having a tax effort index of 1.1, which means that we are taxing below, we are collecting revenue below our, our potential. And this, we have identified the reasons. Number one is tax avoidance and tax evasion outright tax evasion. But also we have the issue of the structure of the economy, the informality of our businesses, making them uh, very difficult to identify for tax obligations. We have also seen the issue of corruption amongst our tax collectors and the other institutions collecting non-tax revenue. And then also the issue of the tax exemptions. We have put a plan in place and we are going to execute it beginning this coming year to ensure that these four issues are addressed. We mobilize more revenue without creating more burden on the taxpayers. That's why this coming year, again, we are not introducing new taxes. 
and also we are not raising the tax rates. We shall just enforce compliance and also expand the tax base such that every Ugandan pays something little, but at the end of the day, we mobilize more revenue to finance our development. So all of those uh, events have come in to affect our performance, but despite all of that, we've been able to maintain the momentum for growth. The economy has continued to expand, but at a rate which is lower than what we had projected. That's why we've downgraded our growth from 6% to 5.3% this financial year. We expect that by the end of the financial year in June 2023, Ugandan economy would have expanded by 5.3%. And this also has affected people at micro level in terms of cost of living. The cost of living has increased as well as the lower levels of incomes of people. They earned less than what they had expected. On the other hand, however, we've also had some achievements in this year, 2022. Number one, we started the year by announcing the final investment decision for our oil and gas, particularly for the HICOP, the East African oil pipeline. The, that pipeline is underway, and as Uganda, we've fully provided for the equity of our company, UNOC, to participate in this oil pipeline. We gave them at a tune of over $308 million to contribute their equity. And our oil projects are advancing very well in the Albertine. We have also managed to negotiate with our neighbors, especially Kenya, to remove the tariff and the non-tariff barriers which were affecting our exports. That's why our exports have grown this year despite the challenges. We have seen more exports going to our East African community, South Sudan, DR Congo, and Kenya in particular. We have also been able to roll out our transformative program of the parish development model, which has been adopted by government to integrate all Ugandans who are outside the money economy to also participate in the economy. We have put aside a total of 1.1 trillion shillings to disperse throughout the year, the financial year, to the parishes, all parishes in Uganda. They are going to receive their 100 million shillings. This 1.1 trillion shillings was realized from our budget without borrowing a penny out of it. We have also been able to enhance the scientists and our military officers serving us in the UPDF from our internally generated money again without borrowing a penny. We have enhanced them and they are happy people, I'm sure. We have been able also to demonstrate this year 2022, the power of economics over and above common sense. As you remember, the year began with a huge debate in Uganda when fuel prices increased. And many people were asking us to practice common sense instead of economics. They wanted us to give subsidies or to cut taxes and so on and so forth. We said, you know, economics will be the one we are going to use. So I promised Ugandans and my leaders, right from His Excellency the President, the Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development, and other leaders, that the prices we are going to reduce 
back to the market clearing equilibrium without distortion. And we are ending the year with this fact that the prices of fuel have actually started to go down. And they are going to go down to the levels where all Ugandans want them to be. Uh, we have also uh, seen Uganda this year, 2022, get ranked as the first country in East Africa. We are now in the first position and fifth in Africa in a financial market development index. This means what? That Uganda's financial market has deepened at a faster rate than any other country within the ESC, and also among the, the top five in Africa. This shows a strong regulation of the financial sector by our central bank, and also it shows that we are actually, as a country, are getting there in deepening our financial sector. These are some of the things which will attract more investors to this economy. As well, the year has seen rapid expansion of our industrial activity. 2022 has been a year of import substitution. We have seen our industrial parks attract more investments. We have also, as government, been able to invest more in infrastructure development in industrial parks. Uh, when you talk of Namanve Industrial Park, in Kapeka, in Imbale, in Ilugazi, there is MM Park. Government has provided funds to build infrastructure, roads, uh, electricity substations, as well as uh, drainage, managing drainage. So all of these have uh, um, been good achievements, in my view, uh, throughout the year. Therefore, uh, although we've had difficulties in the year, I am really very happy that 2022 is ending with the inflation also um, uh, capping. I, uh, uh, we are having inflation now at about 10.2% for December. It was 10.6 November. It was 10.7 in October, which shows you that now the curve is taking a downward trend. And we are likely to see inflation uh, getting back to the target rate. And this is coming at a time when we are ending a very difficult year. So those are good news. Uh, 2023, to me, I know that a number of people whom I don't want to call pessimists, they may think that it's going to be a difficult year because we are coming from a difficult time. I'm a very optimistic uh, person, and I, I, I would want to send this message of optimism to all Ugandans. We are focusing uh, this coming year, 2023, the budget on economic transformation. And with that, we are likely to see more resources going into areas which add to wealth, as well as creating jobs for Ugandans. So that will cause more expansion of the economy. That's why the projections are showing our economy will be able to hit 6% in this coming calendar year. That we are talking about. That is for the financial year 23-24, but beginning in a, the coming year. We are also likely to see quicker recovery of the economy as inflation uh, seeds ground, and uh, this is not only in Uganda, but globally, inflation is likely to reduce. So we expect quicker recovery. We expect creating more business opportunities for Ugandans and make them make these opportunities more broadly based. 
That means across sectors and across different uh, economic groups. We are likely to see more value added for export. As you know, government has put up a deliberate plan to support value addition, particularly for those who are exporters. And as government, we are also putting in place in the coming few months an export guarantee scheme to support those people who are willing to participate in this area of exports. We are also integrating more Ugandans in the money economy. We are going to disperse all of the trillion shilling which we have budgeted. We have so far uh, disbursed about half of that money to those uh, especially circles which are ready. We are going now to disperse the remaining money to uh, these circles and all of those which will you know, come online with the readiness to ensure that they support Ugandans. So economic growth, therefore, is projected at 5.3, as I've said, for this financial year and the next financial year back to 6%. We are all, as I've also said, inflation has stopped rising and now the only route it has is to go down. We have also seen good weather with the rains and this is likely to bring in good harvest in our uh, main sector of the economy, which employs more Ugandans, the agricultural sector. But we have also learned the lesson not to rely only on gifts of nature. So we are going to be investing more heavily in irrigation, especially in the smallholder uh, solar powered irrigation starting with those areas which are hard hit by drought. Exports are also growing and we are likely to see more growth. Foreign direct investments have rebounded and we are likely to see more foreign direct investors coming in. Our shilling is getting stronger against many of the major currencies, the euro, the pound, the British pound, and also the yen. And even the dollar, the shilling has been very resilient. We expect it to perform much better the coming year. I should sum it up with the fortunes of the oil and gas. This sector is going to bring in more foreign direct investment. And that means more foreign exchange to support our reserves and also to support the, the shilling. I've talked about agriculture is likely to recover much faster because of the good rains, the good weather, the irrigation, and private sector investment. But also, we are likely to see improved industrial activity as the global prices of intermediate goods reduce. Therefore, we anticipate that the economy of Uganda is going to expand to about $48 billion next year and much further to $53.5 billion in the financial year 23-24. So we are very optimistic about the future of the country. Mm -hmm.